Hey Ding Dongs, GameSpot Universe's resident wrestler nerd Matt Elfring here, and because the Royal Rumble is happening on January 29th on pay-per-view and the WWE Network, I've been thinking quite a bit about the history of the Royal Rumble. To date, there have been 29 Rumbles at WWE, and while it's personally my favorite event of the year, figuring out which Royal Rumble was the best Royal Rumble in the company's history was a bit tougher than I thought. Before we delve into which Rumble was the best, uh, you can take a quick moment to hit pause and then hit that subscribe button down there if you enjoy wrestling videos. Let us know what types of wrestling videos you'd like to see as well. So going through the various Rumbles of the past, I came to the conclusion that the 2000s Royal Rumble was the best Rumble in WWE's history. Obviously, what is the best and the worst is entirely subjective, but the 2000 Rumble, which took place on January 23rd at Madison Square Garden, had a lot of great standout moments that make it better than the others. So kicking off 2000's Royal Rumble was Kurt Angle, and he was going to face a mystery opponent. Said opponent ended up being ECW star Taz, the mayor of Suplex City, before Brock Lesnar won the popular vote back in 2015. What's cool about this match was that it was so short. Now, non-Rumble matches tend to be a tad shorter than other pay-per-views because the actual Rumble match is so long. However, this quick match was smooth and straight to the point. Taz came in, suplexed Angle a few times, and then locked in the Taz mission for the win. It was almost as dominant as Lesnar Cena at SummerSlam 2014. The Dudley Boys face the Hardy Boys in an Elimination Tables match at 2000's Royal Rumble, which should be remembered as one of the most intense Rumble matches in history. Normally, a match like this would build to the eventual moment that a table was put into the ring and someone was thrown through it. However, here, tables were in the ring at the start of the match, and right from the get-go, there's this back-and-forth battle of either a Dudley or a Hardy just mere moments from losing the match. There were a ton of great high spots during the match, which you'd expect from the Hardys, and the match teased Petered on brutality with all the chair shots. The Hardys ended up winning with a ridiculous swanton bomb off the balcony. Now onto something so awkward it only could have come from the Attitude Era. Jerry Lawler hosted the Miss Rumble contest, which featured all of WWE's women wrestlers modeling bikinis for a panel of skeezy looking judges, which somehow included Conan O'Brien co-host Andy Richter. This event seemed to have gotten a bigger reaction than the previous, probably because there were half-naked women in the ring and the audience was completely made up of drunken college students. However, the Miss Rumble contest had a late entrant, the then 76-year-old Mae Young, who came to the ring and removed her top, much to Lawler's dismay. That act somehow got her the win, and she got topless again, only to be covered up by Mark Henry. We may be skipping a few matches, but let's talk about Cactus Jack vs. Triple H in a street fight for the WWE Championship. Completely forgetting the fact that this street fight never actually makes it to the street, this was a long, brutal, slow-crawling match. There aren't any huge, risk-taking spots. It's just two men slowly beating each other almost to death. It's like the fist fight from They Live, but a thousand times more exciting. Then, there was the Royal Rumble match, which was nothing short of controlled chaos. Cringeworthy moment number two happens here, when the members of Too Cool, which are made up of Scotty Too Hotty, Grandmaster Sexay, and Rikishi, all of which are super real names, they're all alone in the match together, and they end up dancing for what feels like 30 minutes. These guys get a giant pop from the audience for this. Dancing moment aside, the Rumble was actually really entertaining for a number of reasons. The first was that this group Kai and Tai kept interfering with the match, randomly. There seemed to be little to no rhyme or reason why this was happening, but frankly, I haven't seen the Monday Night Raws leading up to the event in 17 years, so I have no clue what the story was about. In addition, the Mean Street Posse came down to the ring as well to interfere. Sure, why not? So the final four of the Rumble ended up being The Big Show, The Rock, Kane, and X-Pac. X-Pac had been eliminated earlier, but the referee never saw it, so everything's cool, just get back in the ring. Everything that was happening in this match felt like it was leading up to the Big Show going to win, so seeing The Rock win by the skin of his teeth was quite a surprise. Let us know some of your favorite Royal Rumble history moments in the comments section below. I can come down there and then you can hurt me because I'm fragile inside. Uh, also hit subscribe and get great more videos about movies, television, wrestling, comic books, anything that you could want. And that's about it. So I'm going to go back to watching The Simpsons while I work. Bye bye.